Kia ora, everybody. We're looking at pages 28 and 29, and that is locating turning points and finding their nature. So what we're going to do today is I'm just going to run through an example because it will be very similar to how you're doing it in your books. So I've got the example on this side of the screen here. I'm just going to pull this out a bit. So the example we're going to look at is if I have a function in regard to x, and that function is 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus x. So that's a function, and I want to find out where this function turns. So when the function, see how we've got our function is increasing, 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 and then it's increasing decreasingly until a point where it turns and it starts decreasing. So then it's decreasing, decreasing, and then decreasing, decreasingly. And then at this point here, it turns again to being increasing. So what we've got here is a positive cubic, and it has two turning points. There's one turning point here, where it turns from increasing to decreasing, and then another turning point here, where it starts increasing again. So we're going to look at how to find turning points. Now, finding a turning point, the main idea is this. Turning points happen when the gradient, I wonder if you can read this, when the gradient changes, or when the gradient uh, is equal to zero, really. Right? The points on this graph here, when the gradient is no longer increasing, but at that point where it's actually exactly zero is the exact point where it turns. So all we're going to need to find is we are going to find the derivative. So we're going to find f dash of x. So we're going to get the derivative, and all we're going to do is we're going to find out when the derivative is equal to zero. So whenever the derivative is equal to zero, that is when the gradient is zero. And that will be where our turning points are. All right, so let's do that. Let's find the gradient, or the derivative. So the derivative f dash of x, all we do is we get each bit separately. So I'm going to do this bit first. So we multiply by the power. So 3 times 3 is 9. 9 x. And then we're going to reduce the power by 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2. And then we're going to deal with this bit next. So the derivative of this, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And then we're going to reduce the power by 1, and that's going to be going to x to the power 1. But we don't write x to the power 1 because we're lazy. We just write 4x, minus 4x. Okay, next up, we're going to deal with this one. That's minus x. Now, secretly, there is a to the power of 1, but we don't write that, remember? So what's going to happen here is we're going to multiply it by 1. So it's going to be negative 1. And then x to the power of 1 minus 1 is 0, and we know that anything to the power of 0 equals 1. So that's this idea again. And so therefore, we don't even write the x down here. So this is the derivative here. And all we're doing is we want to find out when the derivative is equal to 0. So at what points is the derivative 0? they will be the turning points. Now, the thing is, we started off here, see how it's a, the highest power is a cubed, and this is a positive number, so we know that the shape is going to be a positive cubic. All right? And we, we also know that when we find the derivative, the derivative if we start with a positive cubic, the derivative is going to be a positive parabola, like this. And those two turning points, right, here and here, are going to be in the derivative when the parabola crosses over the x, uh, the x-intercepts, or the roots of this parabola. 
right? So that's going to give us two x values, and that's what we're doing over here. When this parabola is equal to zero, so this line here is when x is, wait, no, no, when y is equal to zero, sorry, my bad. Oof, this explanation's already going pear-shaped. I should have planned it a little bit more. Am I throwing you off, I think, a little bit? Should probably start again. Oh, well. Pretty much, we started off with a cubic, a positive cubic, so it's going to end up being a positive parabola. And when we set y equal to 0 in our derivative, which will be this line, it will find out these two points here, this one here and this one here. And then that shows us what our turning points are going to be. Okay, now can we do something fancy to factorize this? I could check by just looking at if these are nice numbers. They are not nice numbers. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm, no, they are extremely ugly numbers. So, in fact, I'm just going to use my calculator. So, you could either use the quadratic formula or you can use your calculator. So, we're going to use the calculator, graphics calculator today. So what I need to do is I'm going to go into menu. I'm going to go over to equation. And I'm going to put in a polynomial. And it's 2 degree. So I'm going to put in as A value is 9. B value is negative 4. And the C value is negative 1. I'm going to solve that. And that gives me my two points. So I probably should have done an example that was a little bit more straightforward. So x1 is going to be negative 0 0.178, and x2 is going to be 0 0.6228. Now, I don't need that anymore. What's important is that I've actually labeled these in order. My x1 is always going to be the lower of these two values, and my x2 is always going to be the higher of these two values. That matters because those points are in order. Because we know it's a positive cubic, our original function is a positive cubic, or if we're lazy, we could just do plus x to the power 3. This is purely lazy. We know that these points are going to be here. We know that x1 is going to be negative 0 0.178. That will be the point. And our x2 will be at 0 0.6228. So now we know where these two turning points are because we substituted in when is our derivative function outputting a 0. So we're asking over here on the question, when is this derivative, the blue dashed line, equal to 0? Because those points correspond to when the function is turning, when the function has a gradient of zero. So let's move our little triangle around. So see how at this point, I'm going to put in the point we found, 0 0.6228. Notice our gradient at this point is zero. It's not increasing, it's not decreasing. It is a turning point. So that's one of our turning points. And our other turning point we found to be negative 0 0.178. So let's have a look at that one. So as you can see here, the gradient is also zero. So that's what we're finding, turning points. Okay, so now that we've found our turning points, there was another thing that we wanted to look at. Oh, maybe I should say, ooh, I do need to show you one more thing. Okay, we need to substitute these points in and maybe find coordinates. So let's just do that quickly. So if you want...